Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this is another installment of United States Air Force T-37 Instructor Pilot Tales. Now, as I mentioned in another video, that the T-37 is rather daunting to fly. Lots of knobs, buttons, levers, lots of maneuvers, spins, acro, navigation, formation, contact, which is basically flying around the pattern. And the Air Force wants to find out rather quickly if the student has what it takes. So they're under, understandably, under a lot of pressure. Now, I was an instructor back at Advanced Air Force Base in the mid-70s, and here's a picture of uh, the runways. The uh, shorter runway to the left is 5,000 feet long. That was typically the Tweet runway. The two center ones, the longer runways, were the T-38, which, of course, was a much higher speed aircraft. Now, with all the student training we did, that one little runway wasn't quite enough to hack it. So, we had an out. We would go up to... And it's that A562 there. It's a little auxiliary airfield just for us um, that uh, we went up with the uh, students called Kegelman that uh, we went up there and we flew patterns on. Now, as an instructor, you're always going to have some students that are really good and some that are not so good. And there are some students, one or two, that you will probably remember for the rest of your career because they did some rather unique things. Now, one student I'm going to talk about, he had a last name, not to be disclosed, that um, was related to a very uh, famous circus family. Okay. Um, we, the instructors, ended up referring to him amongst ourselves as the Flying Circus. Well, we're going to go up to Kegelman with this student, we're going to do some patterns. Well, I demonstrate one. He comes around, and as we touch down, all of a sudden, the nose slams down, the aircraft starts to veer wide, wildly, and I, instead of saying the typical thing, instructor says, I've got it, I went, holy, and expletive deleted sort of thing. Uh, this shocked him enough that he immediately took his hands off the controls, and all of a sudden, the airplane straightens out. Well, I'm going, this is weird. Well, you apply power, and these uh, J69 engines, they take 18 seconds to go from idle to full power. So it takes them a while to, uh, to get the power in. And uh, the power comes in, and we take off. And come around, well, I don't know what's going on here, but let's, uh, you know, I decide I'm going to do a landing just to check it out. And I come in, and as I'm slowing down, I get this, and as I speed up, I go, higher. And I go, what is that weird little noise? And... Something seemed wrong, so eh, let's take it back. Let's take it back. So we we uh, go in and we park the aircraft, and the mechanics look at us and they come over to me and says, "What did you do?" And I go, "What do you mean?" He says, "Well, look at these tires. They were essentially brand new. We had started out with brand new tires, and it looked like somebody had taken the tire and just sawn off the top. You could see all the cords. It was like kind of a topographical map." Well, that's when I realized, and the student kind of admitted, that he may have had both brakes depressed as we touched down. Well, that was interesting. That's what caused, uh, it's lucky we didn't blow the tires. You would have on a T-38. It's lucky we didn't blow them, but we, uh, we the tires were ruined, of course. They had to replace them. But, uh, well, that was interesting. Well, he was due for a check with a more senior pilot. The um, uh, This is typically done by the flight commander or the vice flight commander. And I went up to the vice flight commander. And I told him, I said, this guy's a little weird. He does strange things. And, of course, the, uh, the assistant flight commander, he had been a KC-135 pilot, 3,000 hours of flight time. And he kind of looked at me, put his hand on my shoulder and says, Ron, I said, I've been around for a while. I mean, you're a new second lieutenant instructor with probably not even 100 hours of instruction time. He says, that's all right. It's all right. I'll take care of him. Okay, well, I was glad to hear that. You know, he's an experienced instructor. Nothing's going to phase him. So away he goes. He goes up and he gives the uh, flying circus student a uh, contact ride. So back they go up uh, to Kegelman up there. And I'm out at the little mobile control unit this time, and we're watching it, and uh, he's coming up there, and um, this, this T-37 lands, but it immediately, 
again starts to fishtail, but it goes towards the side of the runway and almost goes off the runway, comes back, and it was like, whoa, what happened? It went so far off that it was kicking up uh, dust um, on the side of the runway. And uh, then he just takes off, and I hear the instructor, uh, Captain, uh, the uh, assistant uh, flight commander, uh, say, we're going to the area. Okay. That's fine. Well, I go back to um, the briefing room, and the student comes in and he says, you, you know when we landed up at Kegelman and you said, you know, holy expletive deleted? Well, I said, I said, yeah. And I said, well, Captain, I'm not going to disclose his name either, said the same thing. And uh, I said, what did you do? And he says, I'm not sure, but it was about the same thing that happened with us. Well, okay, he goes and sets down. Shortly thereafter, I'm out in the hallway and the captain comes sauntering by. His eyes are kind of down. He looks rather dejected. He walks by and says, you are right about him. You are right about him. And he just shakes his head and walks on. Well, I found out that, you know, for me, it was a little nicer because he landed with bro both brakes locked. So we just kind of, you know, fishtailed a little bit. Um, with the more exper experienced uh, assistant flight commander, he landed, we determined, they determined because there was only one tire that was flattened virtually, uh, that he landed with only one brake locked. Of course, this made for a much more exciting time. And debriefing the student a little bit, he says, um, you know, we, we, we went to the area and I started to say, uh, Captain, and he says, shut up. And we flew around the area for 15 minutes and he would not talk to me. And I tried to one more time, uh, Captain, he says, shut up. And uh, so I didn't say anything and uh, we came back in and landed. That's not the end of the tale with this student. We have a uh, T-37 spin recovery, rather elaborate. And my next little issue with him or instructional uh, sortie was to go up and we're gonna do spins. Well, I demonstrate a spin, recover, we take it back up, now it's his turn. All right, we go into the spin and uh, it goes throttle idle, rudder nail on neutral, stick abruptly full aft and hold. Okay, so far so good. Now the point comes where he has to apply full opposite rudder. And as he does, he kicks the rudder full forward and he relaxes the stick. He doesn't keep holding it back, he relaxes it. Well, this puts you into an accelerated spin. So the aircraft was, was spinning fairly rapidly and now it really accelerates. And I tell him to recover and nothing happens. So I said, I've got it recover. And I said, what, what happened? And he goes, uh, he, he really didn't have an explanation. I see. I said, I just didn't do it right. So I said, well, do you want to try it again? And, uh, which was, you know, kind of a, a rhetorical question because we were going to try it again. So we went back up and we went into another spin and same thing happened when he kicked in the opposite rudder, he came forward on the stick and the aircraft accelerated. Well, I decided I'm going to try to talk him through. Okay. Bring the stick because you can recover and reinitiate the recovery procedure. So I said, okay, bring the stick full back, bring the stick full back. And he really wasn't responding. And this was kind of strange. I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I said, I've got it. And I recovered from the spin. Now, normally it's a 3G pullout, um, but we had gone a while. I was trying to give him some time. We had a floor of 10,000 feet for doing spins. And we of course, we were many thousand feet above that, but I had given him more time, and uh, but we were getting close to that limit. So I, instead of a 3G pull, I did a 4G pull. And as we came out, he is moaning in pain. And I'm going, what's going on? And he is just unresponsive, moaning in pain. And it's like, wow. Okay. So I called the supervisor flying. I said, we're going to go back. Something's wrong. We're going to go back. And I told him, I said, hey, I've, I've got a student here. He's unresponsive. He seems to be in a lot of pain. Um, can you have an ambulance meet us at parking so we can pull him on out and uh, get him some attention? They said, sure, we can do that. So we come back in, um, pitch out, come back in around land. 
And as I'm coming around, I see all these fire trucks next to the runway. And I think, well, we, we better get off the runway quickly. Somebody's got an emergency and we better get out of the way. So we actually pulled off the runway and our parking area was right next to uh, the end of the runway there. And as I pulled into parking, I heard the, uh, the ground controller say, the emergency aircraft has just parked. And I go, oh, that must have been us. Well, I found out that you can't simply request an ambulance to meet the aircraft. You, you have to declare an emergency. So the supervisor of flying, unbeknownst to me, uh, declared an emergency. And um, you don't get the ambulance without the fire trucks. They send the whole kit and caboodle. So the fire trucks are out there and they pull up and they uh, literally have to lift them out of the aircraft. Well, the story was, and I found out this later, he had had a bad back and he'd had a disc problem. And the compression of the spine due to the G-forces was causing the, uh, the disc to compress and put uh, um, pressure on the nerves and was putting him into a lot of pain. So what basically happened was, okay, that was the, that was the end of uh, training now. And, and he was pulled out of the pilot class. Um, they, they did a back operation on him. And uh, he had various duties around uh, the flight line and stuff in, um, uh, in, the, in the various flights, kind of as an admin uh, facility for about a year. And at the end of that time, he was reintroduced to another class and went through pilot training. But unfortunately, um, it was kind of too bad he had to wait around for a year because he um, then washed out. And when I came on, I, I had a degree in engineering and I signed a, a little sheet of paper that says, hey, if you wash out, we're going to keep you as an engineer. I go, OK, I'm not going to wash out. But he had a forestry degree and the Air Force wasn't really excited. So uh, he, like a few of the others, they said, you can't fly, you're out. And so some guy in his early 20s is now trying to figure out what to do in life. Anyway, that's an instructor tale. Thank you for watching.